Um, I think AI has tremendous potential to think more constructively about it. However, I th it's useful to have a clearer view about what precisely we're talking about when we're talking about artificial intelligence. Since 1956, the start of the AI as a field, the objective all along has been not just to automate specific tasks, but to replicate the same full general form of intelligence that make us humans smart and unique on this planet. Um, however, for decades, that original ambition was radically out of reach. So we settled instead for building special purpose systems and so-called expert systems. Expert systems would be big databases. They would be constructed by having some human domain expert and a software engineer sit down together. And the software engineer would painstakingly try to extract from the human the principles that they used to achieve their performance. But these expert systems were very brittle. They didn't scale well. And ultimately, you really got out only what you had put in. Well, since the last eight or nine years, the focus has shifted. Uh, the action is no longer in creating expert systems. The action now is in crafting learning algorithms. Uh, figure out ways of making AI systems be able to learn from experience in much the same way as we humans do. And this has led to uh, revolutionary new capacities, things that were completely impossible to do with good old-fashioned AI is now routinely done. You have these deep neural networks that can, for example, look at the picture and see what is in it, uh, or that can hear somebody talking and transcribe speech. And with deep neural networks and deep reinforcement learning, a wide frontier of new capabilities are opening up that seem to have much more of the intuitive pattern recognition capability that that we human take for granted, but that had proved elusive to date. And progress now seems to be really rapid in this field. And there are just a ton of exciting research avenues at the horizon with a lot of talent and money rushing in to explore all of these. Now, if, as I think will be the case, progress will continue to be rapid, we then have to ask, what will this lead to? And, and here, I think there are two different contexts that we need to recognize and distinguish. There is a near-term context and then a long-term context. And each of these forms the basis for what I think should be a serious conversation. They, are, they both should be taken seriously, but they are different. And if you mix them together, then you get a lot of confusion. I think you simultaneously get an overhyping of what is possible now, uh, but also I think an underhyping of what will ultimately be possible. But if you want to have some view about how to feel about AI, I think we need to recognize that there are these contexts and that the near-term context at some point will become the long-term context. So in the near term, I think AI is really a general purpose technology that will have vast benefits across all sectors of society. Um, it will make many processes more efficient. If you are running a logistics center, let us say, and you are better able to forecast future demand, then you can adjust the stocking so that you need less inventory and you can save money. Um, if you are a big um, social media company and you can find better ways of serving up in the newsfeed things that people actually want to read, you, know, you can increase user engagement. Uh, we will have self-driving cars. We will have medical diagnosis systems that can look at, say, an x-ray and, and help the doctor decide whether it is uh, a cancer or not. And you can go through almost every sector of society and you can see there's some way in which these deep learning systems can, can help us get better results. Um, but then there's the long-term context. And, and there, um, I think AI is not just one more cool technological advance, not just one more interesting gadget. Um, what happens if AI one day succeeds at its original goal, which has been all along, as I said, to replicate uh, human intelligence in all domains, then really what we have is the last invention that humans will ever need to make. If you think about what it means to mechanize intelligence to full human level performance, and then shortly after, presumably uh, superhuman levels of intelligence, 
uh, you soon realize that that's not just the technology advanced like any other. If you have machines that can do research, that can do science better than we humans can do, then from there on, uh, really further progress is driven by the machines. And so this transition to the machine superintelligence era um, will be, I think, the most important thing that has ever happened in human history. And it will unlock an enormous potential for wonderful things to occur. I think a whole post-human condition becomes possible. Uh, space colonization, cures for aging, all these things that we tend to think of as just science fiction. I think that actually becomes a real possibility once you have super intelligent scientists and technologists. But along with this enormous potential for good, I think there is also going to be very significant risks, including existential risks, threats to the very survival of uh, our species. And so what I think we should do is, I don't think we should try to stop this. I don't think it's possible to stop progress in AI. And even if we could, I don't think it would be a good idea to do so. Uh, but we should try to get our act together, both doing technical research into scalable methods for AI control, so that even as the systems become arbitrarily intelligent and at some points uh, super intelligent, we still know how to align them with human values. And Professor also progress in government so that we will have the governance structure that makes it possible for us to handle these enormous powers uh, responsibly and for the benefit of all.